I must begin with the obvious. Reality is by no means required to follow our rules of storytelling. It is not a divine truth enunciated here. Rather, what is offered is a therapeutic strategy for daily living. It is a way to view the world and guide one's behavior to maximize the potential for greatness that one may experience. That being said, let us begin. The first thing one must recognize is that suffering is always a part of life, and it is often a key experience in any good story. The victim suffers, the villain suffers, and even the hero suffers as well. What sets each apart from the other is how they respond to their individual moments of suffering. When the victim suffers, they are overwhelmed and unable to act on their own behalf. For the victim, a rescue is in order. The victim does not grow or evolve. They either die awaiting salvation or are saved. No more, no less. My friend, do not let this mindset befall you. The world is usually too busy with itself to stop and elevate the downtrodden. Your salvation must come from your own hands, for they are the most reliable hands you will ever truly know. The villain suffers the same as anyone else. When the villain suffers, they suffer without heroic salvation and must save themselves. This experience makes the villain bitter. To them, the world betrayed them. It left them broken and alone. They do not humble themselves. Instead, they lash out and take revenge on the world. The villain creates more victims in the world simply because they themselves were victimized without salvation. Again, my friend, do not let this mindset befall you. Nature is harsh and cruel, but it is also delicate and beautiful as well. One event leads to another and every moment serves the final outcome. My friend, when you are burdened with suffering, suffer with a sense of purpose for personal growth. Evolve beyond the natural human sense of petty entitlement. Aim to learn as much as you can about your suffering so that you may soften the impact of suffering in others. Become their hero so that you may know with absolute certainty that heroes do exist. And yes, my friend, the hero must suffer. The hero never starts out heroic. Rather, they are forced to grow into the role. When the hero suffers, they do not blame the world, nor do they lash out in revenge from the experience. Instead, they endure and pay attention. The hero learns all they can to prevent suffering's reoccurrence. When the hero is victimized, they do not internalize it. They recognize that the world is filled with both friends and foe. When isolated among enemies, the hero knows. Outside, allies await. In order to recruit the support of allies, the hero must first demonstrate that they are an ally to themselves. And so, the hero takes responsibility for their future. They persevere through their suffering in order to come out the other side humbled, informed, and emboldened by the knowledge that they are capable of enduring pain and that they are capable of acting on their own behalf. This is the mindset I wish for you. To be able to endure without being wounded. To be willing to take action without tormenting the innocent. And to be able to grow and evolve without stagnating in self-absorption. In storytelling, villains are usually recognized by scars or deformities. They are often presented as twisted fiends that are feared by all. My friend, do not dismay if you are burdened with such curses. For the tragic villain is similar to the distorted mask of the comedic hero in their ghoulish look alone. A villain may be of close relation to the hero, but it is not the central character. This is your life. You are the central character. For this reason I say with absolute confidence, 
You are the hero of your life. No cursed scar or deformity can ever change that. Know that tragedy aims to deliver the right ending, whereas comedy aims to deliver a happy one. To shift your life from the horrors of a tragedy to the joys of a comedy, you must take notice and endure. Act justly, boldly, and consistently so that in time your efforts will amass a gravity so great that it will draw in your reward. And finally, my friend, I must address the Deus Ex Machina, or divine intervention as it is more commonly known. It is practically forbidden in tragedy. Although mentioned, it is never clearly defined in Aristotle's treatise on poetics. But the treatise is incomplete. The great fire of Alexandria cremated portions of the storytelling guide, and one can safely assume the full definition and rules of divine intervention would be found among the charred remains of Aristotle's missing text in the section on comedy defined there and quite likely essential to such a story. My friend, know that it is dangerous and foolish to let time waste away while waiting for the universe to intervene on one's own behalf just so one can avoid a tragic life. Instead, dear hero, I urge you to nurture your hope by amassing positive actions. Let their reward be the gateway to your personal paradise so that if divine intervention should occur, you will have the capacity to be grateful for it. If you are suffering and cursed with a ghoulish body, then allow the great fire of Alexandria to be divine intervention for you, for it scorched the world clean of Aristotle's definition and rules of the comedic hero. We know that tragic villains look nightmarishly fiendish, but we also know that the comedic mask is twisted as well. Alexandria's fire was divine intervention because it created a hole for the tragic villain to crawl into so that they may emerge the hero of some dark and twisted comedy. The only requirement is that one must act like a hero to be one.